Hello everyone and welcome to Shreyas's Guide to Medicine. So recently, Dundee was ranked as one of the best medical universities in the UK. Exciting times! Well, in this video, I decided to talk about if rankings really do matter when choosing your medical school and the criteria that you should focus on when making a decision. Want to find out more? So let's get started. The Complete University Guide released their 2021 medical school rankings in the UK and Dundee was ranked first, beating out prestigious universities such as Edinburgh, Cambridge and UCL. Now does that mean that Dundee is better than these universities? Well I like to think so, but unfortunately it's not as simple as that. And that brings me to point number one, the importance of making your own rankings. There are numerous things that are involved when ranking a particular university or the course that it offers. Some of these affect your university experience, and some don't. Certain criteria such as graduate prospect may play a bigger part in other courses, but when it comes to medicine, the percentage of graduates that are employed by the NHS is about 98-100% to 100 overall, thus this shouldn't affect your decision. So mistake number one you should avoid is blindly looking at the medical school rankings when making your decision. I was once that naive kid that thought, if I chose my medical school based on its rankings, then I'll be getting the best teaching out there. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. As you can see here, Dundee is the first in the complete university guide, but sixth on the Guardian's rankings. And as opposed to just taking the overall scores and running with it, I would seriously advise looking at each criteria individually and making your own rankings based on its importance. For example, if you're the type of person that's more inclined towards academic medicine, then try to opt for medical schools that are more research intensive or closely affiliated to university hospitals, as opposed to choosing the medical school that's ranked number one overall, but lacks research intensity and quality. Similarly, if you're the type of student that depends on proper lectures and course structure, you're better off choosing medical schools with higher course quality ratings. This is indeed a rough guide and not a clear translation of what is offered by each university. Nevertheless, this can aid you in narrowing down your selection, especially at the beginning. My second point for today's video is the importance of understanding course structure. There are currently three different types of course structure that is practiced in medical schools around the world. And this can be broken down into traditional, integrated and problem-based learning. Traditional courses have a clearly divided structure with two to three pre-clinical years followed by three clinical years. The majority of your first three years will be spent going for lectures, tutorials, as well as dealing with plenty of homework. You'll be mainly learning about the scientific theory of medicine, covering different types of subjects including anatomy, physiology, and pathology. You'll get minimal exposure to clinical teachings during the first three years, but thereafter you'll be taught in a clinical setting, such as the hospital and the wards. In short, you spend the first three years in medical school being cooped up in a room trying to memorize everything and the remaining years being grilled by your consultants and trying to figure out where did all the information in your head go. The benefits of this structure is that you start off by learning the basics of medicine, which then gives you a better foundation as well as understanding later on during your clinical years. I'm the type of person who needs to understand to learn and given the choice, this type of course structure would have suited my way of learning. Waiting until you have a strong foundation and base can also give you more confidence when you start your clinical placements. But if you prefer to dive right in, the integrated course structures are better suited for you. The one main difference between this and traditional course is the fact that you start learning clinical medicine from day one. This method is recommended by the General Medical Council and is used by most universities in the UK, including Dundee. The benefits of this structure is that exposure to clinical medicine at an early stage will not only help you understand the mechanisms underpinning the functioning of the human body, but as to how this understanding applies to clinical practice. This structure also encourages early patient contact, which improves your communication as well as your practical skills when on the ward. I understand that even after watching this video or reading articles on different types of cost structure doesn't really help you in deciding between traditional or integrated, that's okay, as both these structures are highly dependent on lectures and tutorials, and if you prefer these methods, you won't go wrong in choosing either of them. But the same can't be said for problem-based learning. In problem-based learning, students are allocated into groups, 
and given medical cases to resolve and learn from them. This type of teaching encourages self-learning as there are not as many lectures or tutorials as the previously mentioned structures. So if you're the type of student who gets easily distracted or can't pay attention for long durations of time, this type of structure might suit you. Group work on top of academic and clinical learning helps students build their communication, teamwork and problem solving skills. You'll be required to do your own research and discuss among your group members. This can be intimidating for those who are reserved or shy, but this will build your confidence and your ability to speak in bigger crowds, which comes in handy later down the road. An additional point in the core structure that you might want to take note is the opportunity to do an intercalated BSc. Intercalating allows you to take time out of your regular medical degree to study specific areas of your interests. This is often seen as a way into academic medicine with the opportunity to undertake clinical research or education and teaching. Some, you, some medical schools make it compulsory for you to undertake a BSc, which prolongs your time in medical school by a year, as if we don't spend enough time here already. But if you're not keen on doing this, I highly advise you guys opt for medical schools which give you the opportunity further down the line. I have friends who chose to intercalate after their third year, which not only improved their CV, but also gave them exposure to academic medicine. I did not think of this during my time, but I would highly advise you guys to consider it if you have the chance. Doing an extra year within your degree not only gets you extra points for your application into foundation program, but also helps you focus on what you particularly enjoy and gaining valuable insight into where you want your career to progress. However, there are a couple of things that you need to consider, including prolonging your time in university by a year, as well as the financial implications, especially for international students. The final point in today's video is the importance of location. Now, as much as you think this does not play a big part, spending five to six years in one city should to a certain extent be taken into consideration when making a decision. Simple things such as the convenience of public transport, the average rental costs, and the overall nature of the city does play a huge part in the long term. For example, studying in a small city like Dundee was ideal for myself as I was born and brought up in a similar setting. This also helped me stay focused a lot easier as opposed to studying in a big city with 101 things to do to get me distracted. Or if you guys are massive Liverpool fans, you could study in Liverpool and watch them win countless trophies over the next few years. Or if you guys are United fans, you could study in Manchester and watch City win a couple of them. Jokes aside, if possible, try to visit your university and get a feel of the campus and the city itself. This will definitely help you in making your decision. Choosing four from the numerous medical schools out there can be quite intimidating, but in the end, all medical schools in the UK are highly regulated by the General Medical Council. So choose the medical school that's right for you and you won't go wrong. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. That is it for today's video guys. Please do like and subscribe down below for more medical school tips. Check out my previous video if you guys enjoyed this one. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter as I've left my links in the description box. Stay safe out there guys and take care.